entire bike, putting it in that frame jig over there, and building a whole new motorcycle. <laughs> she runs good, so let's let's start. Let's get to work. All right, so I've got a spoon with fitting with me. I forgot that I'm live streaming this right now. Now I'm recording this. See, it looks weird because I'm talking to a camera here and a camera over there. But I'm live streaming this on Twitch right now while I take it apart with uh, with my buddy here as well. But yeah, we're just disabling the, uh, the whole Harley. Like, disabling? I don't know the fuck call it. But I want the engine now. That's what I want. So let's do it. this in the frame stick just to kind of see where it sits and kind of get an idea of what angle this rake is. I need to figure out how much of an angle this rake is so I can say fuck it and do one that's about 10 more degrees more rakier, I guess for lack of a better term. This allows me to kind of copy some measurements. Specifically what I'm going to be doing is using these points to kind of recreate the engine with just some steel. That way I can build the frame around it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Whatever. Literally right now the only thing that's holding it in is the neck. That's how strong this neck piece is up here. So that's cool. But this is just to kind of like look at it. Engine's out. The bike's literally in tatters. The frame's sitting over there in pieces, and we got everything kind of taken apart. So cheaters always win. So yeah, that's the next step. We got to clean up our mess, though. Now it's time for me to cheat. For me to recreate the motor mounts, what I'm going to do is I have some some really thin stock steel that I picked up at just a local hardware store. Basically, cut it to size and put it in between all the motor mounts and just weld up almost like a jig that will represent where all the motor mounts are going to be and then I'll put it inside my frame jig and that way I can kind of build the bike around it. I'm going to kind of sleep on that DF right now. I don't know necessarily if it's going to be worth the time. Um, but here we have our chopper neck that I ordered online. I, I don't remember what website I ordered it, but you can find these all, all around. They're standard Harley 2-inch uh, neck cones made out of the same type of steel we're going to be using here, DOM. And they, this one came with the bearings and the, uh, the, the neck cone for the top of the steering neck. <clears throat> so this this will work just fine. With the neck cones in there, it'll be the perfect size. So next what I'm going to be doing is setting the angle of the rake. It's pretty important considering what type of... Uh, motorcycle you're gonna be going with. So right now I have the Sportster frame, which has got a actually got a pretty decent rake. And since it is not on its wheels, the rake is gonna be a little bit different. But I believe these are around anywhere between 30 and 35. This says 33 uh, degrees of rake, which is you know it's pretty standard. I think it's I think the factory on this is 30 or 35, one of the two. Um, but I can replicate this. The the magnet is actually very similar. Right now the frame jig is set at 24, so all we have to do is loosen this bolt up. Tilt it down until it's about 35, maybe even go 37, get a little crazy, you know? And uh, then we can start setting the jig up for the build. Fuck it, let's do 37 degrees. Just to get crazy, we're going to 37 degrees of rake on our first build. Closer to 
36 than it is 37, so what is wrong with it? So this is a good way to get an idea of where you want your rear wheel to be in relation to like the engine and where the front forks are. So as you can see right now, the way the frame jig is set up, that the rear wheel is going to be really close to where the front wheel is, and we don't want that. So we need to reset the rear frame jig, and we also want to bring that wheel down just a little bit so we have uh, you know, more of a low rider, like this, this right here. I, I believe the general rule is that you take how tall the wheel is, cut it in half, and that's where you kind of set the rear axle plate. So this is a 16 inch wheel, so we would put it 8 inches from the base of the frame jig, according to what I've read online. There you go, that still gives us an angle to meet up with our engine mount. It's good to go. That looks to be about right. I think, I don't know, I'll fucking figure it out. This is where things kind of get real. I say that because this is, uh, up until this point, I've been all talk, right? Like, I've been doing things, but realistically, I haven't even really started to build the bike. Just kind of get everything ready and get some engine in. Now it's time to build the bike. I've researched as much as I can to make myself happy enough to do this, and at this point, there's no amount of research that I can do that will suffice it over experience. So at this point, I basically got to start cutting and welding. First step is to build the down tube. Now I'm going to go with a single down tube, split it off into two, and run it. That's basically what I'm going to do, and then go back. Like, that's how this is going to happen. So the first step is to make the down tube. Let's do it. <laughs> at this point, I've been pretty confident about this. I mean, I've been on and off about certain things, but at this point now, I'm actually nervous because, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple at this point. It's just building, cutting, welding, making everything fit, yada, yada. But uh, now I have to actually do it. A bunch of tubing right here at the bottom, this, this round tube. That's a dog. This round tubing right here, that's the entire bike. That's what we're going to use to build it. That's about 25 feet, I want to say, of stainless steel DOM. It's 1 8 inch thick walling. Uh, it's 1.25 uh, OD. So now we need to find the angle. We're not going to do straight down. Straight down is kind of a problem. We're going to do it at a slight angle like so. So now we just got to figure out what is this angle. It's time to set up our tube notcher. Thankfully they have this really, really nifty um, measuring system built into it so I can get my angles correct. But basically you just set it at whatever angle you want. This thing's actually really neat. Tube notcher literally just bolts up to any half inch drill. Yep, I'm gonna have to buy an uh, corded one. There we go, now we're kicking with gears. Cool. I've uh, put a contour or a bevel on all the edges on this, just so the, uh, the welder has better penetration. So yeah, I've also stripped all the metal here with just a sandpaper. Clean it up. Let's get started, mate! That is a perfect angle. Alright, um, I've done some more measuring. Uh, I, I want to make this actually really clear. I went ahead and completely welded the neck because a lot of the weight from the frame is going to be on the neck. But the rest of the bike, I'm going to be uh, just basically tacking in place until everything is where I want it to be to prevent it from warping. I should have mentioned that earlier, but I didn't. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. But now it's time to make our first bends for the uh, basically the whole bottom of the bike that's going to connect from the down tube all the way to the rear axle or the plates anyway. We need a piece that has a bend that kind of comes in at an angle here and then bends straight back. Goes straight to about here and this is where it needs to widen up just a little bit. I've, I've marked it on my jig so I know kind of where it needs to start to be wide but basically it needs to start widening up around here for the tire so it can fix to the, uh, so the frame can fix to the axle plates. 
So we need three bends. This, I believe it's 35 degrees, we'll figure it out. And then there'll be a bend that tilts it outwards a little bit, and then another bend that tilts it upwards a little bit. So we'll figure out these a little bit when, when we need it, but uh, basically that's what we need to do. I've not used this two bender yet, but it's relatively simple. I figured it out online. Yeah, so it turns out I actually had this on backwards. The instructions weren't super clear, but I figured it out. We're good to go. What you want to do is you want to put tension on the tubing before you start bending because tube has a kind of a, a springy effect to it. So you want to make sure that absolute zero is when it has some sort of pressure on it. I'm just going to start doing the thing here. Always mark on the tube too for reasons that I, I forgot to mention earlier. You should always make a pr preliminary mark. And this little, I have a couple of, I have like an electric one, but this one works really good too. Do we really have to go to 80? I think we have to go to 80. Actually, not bad, considering I still don't understand how angles work, <laughs> like, I'm still struggling with that. What I'll end up doing is uh, scalloping out this, uh, like, with the, uh, the, like, with the uh, tube notcher that I did up here. I'll just scallop this out, <clears throat> and uh, then I will weld that flush with there, and I'll create a, a nice little gusset. I think I'll probably keep the tubing down to here, and that way I can just weld a gusset uh, over it on this side, and probably on this side, too, just to make sure that it's nice and structural. Um, <clears throat> my main concern was the neck. The neck actually appears to be pretty good. The penetration seems good. All right, guys, I'm gonna kind of use this as a temporary stopping point just because I want to give you guys an update. It's been a couple of days since I've uploaded a video and we've made a lot of progress on this. So I don't want to get, so I don't want the video to get too far ahead of itself because there's still a lot more that needs to happen here. Um, so right now we have the neck and the down tube completely welded up, good to go. Like I said, I just did that because I want the weight to be able to support itself. Not just using some little uh, tack welds, I wanted the whole thing to be good to go. And it looks good, it's gonna hold fine. Next I have to completely build the lower frame rails of the actual frame. This is where the engine will sit. Uh, need to work on getting the motor mounts all good to go. So right now I'm gonna take a temporary break just because, like I said, I wanna give you guys an update. I don't want the, the project to get too ahead of itself. Um, and because I will be out of town for like another day or so and just some videos that I've already got made will be uploading. And I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> with my YouTube schedule. I've got no idea. You guys think that I know what I'm doing? I have no idea. We got a lot of problems. We got a lot of problems. Most of them are consistency problems. Dan doesn't know what he's doing. He's so tired, he's doing a really terrible Donald Trump impression. Anyway, so the frame is coming along pretty well. I've only done two things to it, so it's not bad, uh, considering that I've only been working on it for a couple days. But I did want to give you guys an update and let you guys know what's going on. I've got so much footage from Texas that I need to go through. I've got a lot of... I still got a video from Tampa that needs to come out when I was shooting in my buddy's backyard. I, I got a lot of footage and that's why I kind of need to sit back for a little bit and, and figure this shit out. Cause, but so far the build is going great. I'm figuring out things at a very decent pace. It's, it's actually, that being said, I do have like 10 other projects I'm working on, not necessarily all motorcycle related, um, but this is definitely the biggest one. And I got some big things coming for you guys in the future. So stay around. But this frame will be done hopefully in just a couple of days, weeks, I don't know, fuck me. But I also want to say another special thanks to Woodward Fab who hooked me up with the cool tube bender that's working awesome. I was really surprised how easy it was to use once I figured out how to use it because I'm an idiot. They're also the same people who sent me out the tube notcher which actually, uh, I also had to struggle. <laughs> I also struggle with it because I'm an idiot, but I figured it out really quick. And another special thanks to Dash Up, the people who sent me out the bike to begin with. These are the two companies that those those companies right now are the reason I'm able to do this. So super thankful for them. Just want to leave that here at the end of the video. And uh, I will continue this very shortly. At this point, I'm just rambling on because I'm tired. Anyway, guys, the next episode's coming soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fuck me, Jerry. I want you to fuck me.